Hello, welcome grade nines. Today I'm going to um, show you the coding part of uh, PA90 running on the computers. And today we're going to go to scratch.mit.edu. So scratch.mit.edu. It's up here. Um, that's the website. I'll put a link to it in our Google Classroom as well. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to join Scratch. So if you click on join Scratch, you're going to create a username. Um, I don't know if you're allowed any spaces. And then you're going to also create a password. Now just keep in mind that there's a lot of users already. So you got to create a unique username. And then you're going to create a password, type password name, and then go next. And then it's going to go uh, through a, a series of um, uh, I think they ask for your email or to give your email, your parents' email or something like that. You can put your own email in or your parents' email, but it should be an email. Preferably it's your email and one that you um, can access in case you forget your password. And then it'll go through that email. So create an email that's easy to get uh, to use. Once you do have an account, then you're going to go um, to sign in or you may already be signed in. And um, my sign in is like that. And hopefully, I remember my username or password. Yes. Okay. So uh, once you log in here, you're going to see at the top here it says Scratch. It says Create, Explore, Ideas, About, and so on. Also, it has um, messages and also your folder, your, all your stuff. Once you do a whole bunch of programming, when you click on My Stuff, you'll have all your programs show up in here. Okay. But in the meantime, you you won't have anything if you just create an account for the first time. And so you'll probably want to create. Um, and so if you click on Create. All right, I'm just going to move my, I'm going to move down here, actually. Um, so this is the Scratch environment that we're going to use to program. Up here, it's going to say Untitled. Um, it says Untitled 12 because I've done a few Untitled ones before. Uh, this is the name of your game. Um, and if you click on it, you can rename it. So you can call it my first game. Or program it doesn't have to be a game, but um, I think that's what we'll do as a class. Is we'll make a video game together. This video here is just to generally show you the environment. And um, for Monday, what I'd like you to do is just get familiar with the environment and start doing some tutorials. And then throughout the week, I'll start posting um, a video game that we'll make together, and it'll be uh, up to you to keep going and to make it your own later on, to make it unique. So the first thing is um, the environment and set up with things like being able to save and making copies and loading from your computer. Um, this program actually automatically saves as soon as you move things in. It, it, it automatically saves periodically. So not right away, but um, once in a while. If it says save now up here, that means it's not saved. You have to click saved. If there is nothing, as, if there's nothing up here, it's blank, that means it is saved. And um, if I was to leave this code for a while, I'm not going to wait for it, but it'll eventually save by itself. Uh, but you always want to make sure to save it. Click up here and say save if the option is available. If there's no option, that means, again, it's saved. So uh, down here, we under the blue here, we have the motion tab, looks tab, sun, uh, sound, events, control, sensing, operators, variables, and my blocks. And actually, if you go to motion and you just scroll down, you can go through all of them as well. But these little buttons here, they uh, are much quicker. So if you need an operator, click on it. If you need to go to motion, click on it, and it goes right to where you need to be. Um, and you'll notice inside the motion uh, tab that there's a whole bunch of, uh, what they're called blocks, but basically they're bits of code that you can drag and drop into this space here. This space right here, um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but this is where your program is going to sit. 
and this is the program that's going to run this sprite. Now in other programs sprite is just used for basically the way it looks but in this case it's also kind of like the object as well. So um, if you want this cat to move and turn, move 10 steps and turn 15 degrees, you can click on this and I'll do that. You can see over here the cat is actually moving and turning. Okay, So go ahead and play around with that. Try different things, see what will happen if you turn the other way. Um, you can go to a random location. You can bring it out and just click on it and see it go to a random location. Okay. You can also see what happens when you point 90 degrees. You can grab it and move it around and drop it anywhere on the screen as well. So it's, um, it's fairly easy to manipulate and uh, hopefully this environment as you try things out um, it becomes, it, I, I think it's fairly intuitive, but it does take some practice um, to just see what there is. Now th this is the code tab and here is the costume tab. The costume tab shows you um, shows you what the cat looks like in this case um, and you'll see that it has two costumes and if I switch between one costume and the next I can make it, it look like the cat is walking. Okay, I could create another down here. I could um, create another costume. Actually it might make more sense to duplicate this one and then adjust this one here. Um, but I'm going to move the leg down here, something like that. So now I have three with the leg adjusted. Not a useful costume change, but um, just know that you can keep making more and more costumes or not. Um, the This is kind of like an old fashioned paint program. Um, and it's not very complex, but there's two modes. There's a vector mode, which is in right now, which is really nice for uh, modifying and animating characters, but not as easy to draw with. And then there is bitmap. And if I convert this to bitmap, then you'll notice that it gets a little more pixelated. It's actually easier to maybe draw and to, to do a typical like painting the background or filling. Uh, I can pick a different color here. Okay, so it's a little easier to do this kind of thing, uh, but it's now it's quite difficult to move around and animate. You have to redraw it every time. So, um, and if you convert to vector, uh, sorry, bitmap, and then back to vector, you lose actually a lot of the information that you had in vector. Um, so, if I go convert back to vector, now I try to go to animate this thing, and now it's all one. Uh, image and not individual pieces where over here this one is still like I can move the leg, the arm, the tail, the, the eyes, you know, so everything I can control. So typically things start in vector form and then if you need to convert to bitmap I would just say be cautious because you're not coming back without losing a lot of information. Okay, so in this one now if I want to modify this cat say that with just the whiskers I can't do that but on this one I could take that whisker away for instance. What does a cat look like with no whiskers you ask? It looks like this. Okay, almost like a uh, just gotta change the ears and then I got a dog. Um, so that is um, the costumes tab and um, I'll show you how to animate things as well. Uh, and then the last tab here is sound and right now that's a very loud meow. Um, we have the meow uh, or the sound tab and um, we have all the sounds and actually in uh, Scratch has a whole bunch of built-in sounds. If you go to, down here to choose a sound, if you click on that you'll see that there's a whole bunch and actually um, if you click on one you can, like the guitar, you can install it and there's a guitar um, A note. Um, and so you can load a whole bunch of sounds. You can also record your own sound and uh, if you have a mic at home um, and that's really fun to do when you're making your own video game to make custom sounds and you can also um, surprise, I'm not sure why you'd ever do this, um, and upload a sound from your computer. Uh, surprise would just give me a random sound. So if I click on it, yeah I got a sneaker squish or squeak. 
so not necessarily not needed. Uh, costume is the same thing where it's, they have a whole bunch of built-in uh, costumes of people, um, animals, um, different things that you can if you scroll through. So whenever you're adding a new sprite or a new character to your game, um, take a look at what's already available. It could save you a lot of time so you don't have to necessarily draw it all yourself. Okay, um, and then the code, um, let's go back to the code here. Uh, sorry, let's let's talk about this quickly here. I have about uh, four more minutes here, and then uh, this video, video will be over. Um, in here, you can actually add more sprites uh, down here, and I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna add, let's say, a bear, and so I have this cat and this bear here. The bear has multiple costumes, one where it stands up, one where it's on all fours. And so I also, if I go to the code, I also can program this one separately. So this cat has this code on it. This one I can bring in different code. Maybe on this one I want it to glide to a random location. Um, and so I click on that. There it goes gliding to random locations. Glide one second to one random location. Uh, in here has a lot of the information about the sprite. It's called Bear. You can rename this. Um, and it tells the X and Y position. The X position is along the horizontal, the Y along the vertical. And you can show it or you can make it hide, which is going to be quite useful when we make a game. Um, you can change the size of it. Just instead of 100, we can go to 200. You can change the direction. Um, you can have it going this direction or any direction you like. Um, you can make it very small, tiny bear. And um, there's some other features too uh, that we'll talk more about um, when we get to it. I don't, I don't want to overcomplicate things. The last thing here is the stage. And the stage, if you click on that, you notice that you're, you still have the code. Instead of costumes, you have backgrounds and you still have sounds. So the backdrop, uh, backgrounds, uh, there's a whole bunch of built-in ones too. Um, but here, these behave differently than costumes. They're in the background. They don't move around. You can't click on them and drag them around like you can the sprites. Um, and so it's a very, it's a different different beast I guess you would say. The last thing is uh, what I would like you to do Monday morning is after you've uh, created an account and logged in here I want you to go to tutorials and I would like you to go through these tutorials maybe start with the getting started but go through uh, some of these tutorials there's a lot of them um, and I go through some of them and they will actually the beauty of these things is and I'll just move my character one more my video one more time is that they have with scratch you can make videos that have also instructions like animations to show you how to move things in and what to do um, and they're really um, fairly simple and so it's a good way just to get started okay so for Monday what I'd like you to do is create an account and just go through some of the tutorials. I'd, I'd, I'd suggest maybe five tutorials just to get started and get an understanding of uh, how to use this environment because um, later on in the week, probably Tuesday, I'm, I'm going to start, uh, we'll start to make a video game together. All right. Good luck. And we'll see you soon.